questions. You want to do it uh, with a whiteboard? You want to do it, uh, pull up uh, some QBank questions? How do you want to practice? Yeah, maybe maybe just like start with some whiteboard stuff. Yeah, um, I've listened stuff. to, um, I think the first three or four. So I haven't listened to the last one okay. yet, which I think is maybe straddles and- it Spreads, yeah, indeed. And okay. I mean, but I'm feeling pretty good. So maybe just walk through and then maybe if we could just walk yeah. through some questions together. Sure, sure. Of, Sounds like a good idea. Okay, hold on. Let me, I just recently set up a dual screen setup and it's confusing the hell out of me. I can't figure out which, <laughs> why. I know. Dual, you got to have the dual screen though. It's nice. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm glad I'm not going to go back, even though it's aggravating that I can't uh, go as quick as I used to go. But, uh, you know, like you said, I think it's worth sucking it up and trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep, I've got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with the basics. You're held accountable for nine option strategies. And we can go quicker or slower depending on how you do in terms of doing it. But on each of these, you need to know max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. And so uh, let's say that uh, we're considering uh, buying our 100 shares of uh, Apple at 150. So okay. if I bought uh, 100 shares of Apple 150, uh, that's going to cost me uh, fifteen thousand dollars, and if I am only right about one thing, direction, I'm going to make money, and if I'm wrong, I could lose fifteen thousand dollars. But in instead of starting to buy the stock, I say, you know what, fifteen thousand dollars is a little rich for me. So I think instead, what I'll do is I will buy one Apple December one hundred and fifty call at nine okay so you know what i like to do it's in terms of process not testable but what i like to do is before i even get started kind of say okay what am i looking at what we're looking at here is a choice to buy 100 shares of apple at any time between now and december very testable when in december what's that when in december so i have a choice i'm in control so be the yeah well be the last the third friday of the month yep got to be tighter than that you're correct what time at, at uh four eastern that's when they cease trading be careful what you're being asked right so i asked oh, when so. Do cease trading I, I asked when they expire you responded with when they cease trading okay so would it expire then the last day at midnight yeah 11 59 p.m eastern time yep They're close enough by the way they're okay. not gonna have 11 59 midnight i mean you, you're gonna be close right Right. Okay, yeah. So, did we do an opening uh, purchase here, or did we do an opening sale? So we did an opening port purchase. Right on. Good job. So, now remember, once we do our opening purchase, the things that can happen next in terms of the context of the test is you can choose to trade this option. This option can be exercised, or this option can expire. Uh, right now, yeah. right now, Apple is one fifty. What uh, expresses uh, best expresses that relationship of Apple 150 call with Apple at 150? Uh, this contract. Is that parity? Be careful. So, good news. You all the things you're answering are right answers to different questions. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. parity parity would mean a contract that has no time value. Oh, it would be intrinsic value. So this is at the money. At the money, yeah. Right, when the market price and the strike price are one and the same, the contract's at the money. So the contract consists of two things, the intrinsic value and the time value. Right now there's no intrinsic value because it's at the money. So that, that's nine points of intrinsic value. So your customer, let's put in test phraseology, your customer buys one Apple December 150 call at nine when Apple's 150. Oh, now we know what comes next. First question, what is the break even? What yep. is the break even? So that'd be 159. Excellent, excellent. What is the max gain? The max gain would be unlimited. Right on. What's the max? Because the stock can go up and you can buy it. Yeah, right on. You got, you got finite supply of Apple, potential infinite demand. Not too so long. So the max, the max loss would be uh, the premium of nine. Yeah. Now that sounds like a bad thing, but that's actually a good thing, right? Because, you know, right. 
pretty easy to qualify. Yeah, you know, I say, hey, you know, can you afford to lose nine hundred dollars? So you yep. know, you're making a bet, and one of the reasons you buy options is because if you're wrong, you're just going to lose your premium. So whether we're talking about long call, long put, long straddle, you know, debit spread, you know, if you pay money, that's the worst case. So that's one reason you buy options. Now, yep. uh, if we close this out. So let's just, again, we're doing test phrases. Only. Excellent. You nailed everything. Everything was correct. And that's a good sign. Uh, but, you know, one thing we might say on the test, and you can just memorize break-evens and you can compare, uh, but we paid nine. Mm -hmm. Let's put that in red. And yeah, so the T is good. I didn't use this the first time around, but now yeah, they, you know, I think some kind of questions I've been using it. And it helps. As I say, it doesn't have to be, there's lots of methods of doing options, but I you know, a young lady and she said she had her own method. I go, great. As long as you're getting right answers. And if she wasn't getting right answers, I'm like, well, yep, maybe that's a problem. <laughs> you know, if you, and again, I like to do things on a per share basis. And uh, I think you're pretty squared away here. So I'm doing this mainly just to kind of uh, have a conversation I want to have with you more than I think you need, need help on this. Uh, but let's just do test phraseology. The other one I like the T is because it makes it a little more transparent about the offset. The offset would be a closing sale, right? So yeah. we buy one Apple December 150 call at nine when Apple's 150. Several weeks later, several weeks later, you close out at intrinsic value when Apple's 168. So your customer buys one Apple December 150 call at nine when Apple's 150 several weeks later with Apple at 168, your customer closes out at intrinsic value. Now, on the real world, there'd be time value too, but that's phraseology they like to use on the test. Yep, yeah. Right, so what is the intrinsic value of a 150 call? with Apple at 168. So is it 18 or do you have to factor yeah. in the premium? This no, is where I think it. I get a little lost. So that's why right. we're doing this. So the foul already built in. So what is the gain or loss? So I call you up as your broker and I say, hey, Keaton, I'm pretty damn good. We bought a contract for nine, we sold it for 18. You doubled your money. Yep. You doubled your money. That's a pretty damn good return. Now, the guy who bought the stock, Bought Apple at 150 and it's 168, made 18 points. You only made nine. But that guy had to put up 15 grand, right? Yeah. So we took the 1800 divided by that, we'd find out that he didn't double his money. It was a good return. But right, gain or loss means you're going to net the two numbers. Now, you could have just memorized your break even, which you were correct, and it was 159. And you could have just compared that to 168 and told me that's a nine point gain. So you could memorize the break even. And just compare where it's at, right? Bullish or bearish, right? If you're bullish, right, you want it to be above that break even. Yep. Right. So every so intrinsic value is that always just whatever the current market price is over the strike price. Yeah, the relationship. Now be careful because a call call up, the market yep. price has to be up, right? One fifty yep. or lower at expiration, the contract's going to expire. Now let me just give you different phraseology again. As we said, you can just memorize. If you want to just memorize, that's fine. But uh, intellectually, I'm about to give you the same question. So I'm consenting yeah. it's going to be nine again. But I'm just going to, you know, you goof up this question. So it ends up being a paragraph instead of straightforward. So that was yeah. a time clock yeah. question. You know, so a time clock question is I go several weeks later or a month later. And what we did there was we traded the option. But another thing that can happen is the option can be exercised. And so again, same question, intellectually different phraseology. Your customer buys one Apple December 150 call at nine when Apple's at 150. At expiration, Apple is 168. At expiration, Apple's 168. So uh, if Apple's 168, are you going to exercise your call contract? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to buy the Apple at 150. 
And they say, and he sells it in the open market at 168. Now that's actually the same question, just phrased uh, differently, right? Yep. Now, instead of uh, trading the option, we're just going to sell the stock after we exercise the contract. It, ultimately, that ends up being the same number, right? Yeah. Just another way of saying you made, you know, nine points. You can do nine that. Nine points. Now, your yeah. point, if uh, if on the test. You have on the test, they say your customer buys one Apple, December 150, call nine. Be careful about memorizing break evens. What I mean by that is be careful. You understand there's a floor at 150. There's no ceiling, but there's a floor at 150. No ceiling, unlimited gain potential. But uh, they say your customer buys one Apple, December 150, call at nine. When Apple's 150, at expiration, Apple remains unchanged. Apple remains unchanged. Right, so these are the three things that can happen. If an Apple's 150 or lower, the contract is going to expire. By the way, it wouldn't matter if it remains unchanged at 150, 149, 135. That's your worst case scenario. Now, the tests are not going to give you nine points or 900. So, you know, if you're going to put all the zeros in there, just be careful. If this was 10 contracts, we'd be nine thousand dollars. So, you know, I just deal with that as one time when we're done. Right. Yep. Yep. I like All right. That. So every contract has its opposite. Every contract has its opposite. So for every investor convinced that Apple is going up, there's another investor convinced that Apple is going down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sell one Apple December 150 call at nine. Every contract has two parties. Is this a bullish or a bearish transaction? This would be bearish. Yeah, and this is a very dumb bear. So Keaton, on our test, we have smart bears and we have dumb bears. This is kind of like picking up nickels in front of bulldozers. Yeah. So what is your maximum gain in this transaction? Uh, your premium. You get right to on. keep the premium. Yeah, and that's why this is really stupid. What is your max loss? That would be unlimited, right? Yeah, very testable to know the things that expose customers on under risk. You know, if this wholesaling thing doesn't work out, I'm sure it's going to work out. <laughs> but if it didn't, you know, I, mean, I guess I can be a retail broker at Morgan Stanley. You know, yeah. And I come in, I say, hey, Keen, I want to lose so much money that you in advance can't tell me how much. He said, well, then there's a couple of things that will expose you to unlimited risk. Agreeing to sell stock you don't own will expose you to unlimited risk, right? So that's very testable. Selling stock yeah. you don't own will expose you to unlimited risk, right? So you were correct. Max gain is uh, 900. Max loss is unlimited. You're bearish. Uh, what's the break even? Uh, the break even would be the same. 159. Uh, exactly right. Exactly right. So as your tutor so far, uh, excellent. Uh, you know, in terms of a visual representation, so let's just make a visual representation of this. So here is our floor at uh, 150. You know, not testable, but, you know, I think of options being about floors and ceilings. Mm -hmm. 150 is our floor because, you know, 150 or lower, the contract expires, right? So there's our strike yeah. price. And I'll just put over here a floor. Uh, here's the market price. So let's get a different color. Here's the market price of uh, Apple. Right, I can go anywhere. And then your point about the break even, and you were correct, is the break even is the same for both parties. It's just a matter of where you want it in relationship to that break even. So both parties to the contract have this 159 as a break even. It's just the guy who's short wants it in between these two numbers. I don't want to go past that. And then we got brought. 
Yep. Okay. Now, what you might want to do, what you might want to do, if I'm your broker, is I say, you know, what we might want to consider doing is offsetting, offsetting our obligation to sell with a choice to buy. You know, what uh, we have here so far, what we have thus far is really something pretty foolish. Yep. We have an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. And as your broker, I say, you know, agreeing to sell stock you don't own is just really, really not smart. You know, what I'm going to recommend uh, as your broker is I say, Keaton, uh, why don't we offset our obligation to sell with a choice to buy? Because then we would no longer have unlimited loss. You know, why don't we put in a ceiling? We have a floor, but right now we don't have any ceiling. And so what I'm suggesting is maybe we uh, just put in a ceiling here at uh, 160. Say, so, you know, we want to play between 150 and 160, and then we don't want to play no more. Yep. So if we do that, if we do that, we put in a ceiling at 160, what are we going to be doing? Are we going to be doing a flamingo, a condor, an alligator, a straddle, a spread? You know, whatever. Well, we'd go, we'd go long a call. Right on. So let's just do that. It's going to cost us some money. So we're going to spend a little bit of our money. It's okay to spend a little bit of our money because we have some money, right? right? We've got nine bucks, you know, here. Yep. So construction costs money. We're going to do some construction. And again, that's a smart thing to do the construction because without the construction, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be potentially really bad. So we're going to go long. Uh, one. Apple, December, 160 call. And let's say that costs us uh, two points. So test question number one, test question number one is what is the strategy we're looking at now? Are we looking at so a So is this a straddle since they're both calls? This is a or spread. Is it a it's a spread. Spread okay. is when you're long and short the same type the same. of contract, long yeah, and short, sure. the same type of contract. So test question number one is we have to be able to identify the strategy, All right? The strategy here is a spread. By the way, we're smarter bear now. The conversation I'm having with you is not testable. What's, what's testable, Keaton, is on the left-hand side of the screen, all the things you gotta be able to do. Yeah. And so here you have to be able to look at this and say, we're spreading. It's called a spread because what we're spreading is the difference in the premiums, right? If I said, hey, Keaton, what's the spread on the game tonight? That's the difference in the scores, right? And can you yeah. make a bet based on the spread tonight in the game? Absolutely, right? Yep. Yeah. I noticed your NBA thing. I'm a big NBA fan, as I told you. We, we had a referee. We caught him betting on games. And he was betting the yeah. spread, right? He was betting the spread. <laughs> You know, by the way, the bookies loved him because he, you know, he had material non-public information, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you yeah. know, I don't know how material non-public. I mean, you know, in his, uh, his, oh, I don't know, his repentance, he's saying, he, well, he didn't really bet on his the games he was refing. People disagree with it. He was betting sure, more yeah. on the, tendency of the players and he knew their tendencies and, you know, what they're likely to do. And, you know, who knows? But anyways, the spread is the difference. And so... The difference here, so we want to start, now we can either do this with a T, you know, that was, we said, if you don't want to memorize a bunch of stuff and you get good at a T, you won't have to memorize anything. Yep. Uh, because what you can do is you can make a T and you can track money and say, okay, well, because the next thing we're going to have to be able to do is we're going to have to determine, in fact, let's just put that as our number two on our list here, is we're going to have to determine whether the spread we're looking at is a credit or debit spread. So a spread is when you're long and short, 
by the way, once you get that spread down, you'd be in pretty good shape. Because what I mean by that is, is a straddle would be long, long, or short, short. You wouldn't be netting, yeah. you'd be adding, you'd be adding. All yeah. right, so is this a credit? Have you done at least enough work? I know you went to the game yeah, so one time already. And so yeah. let's get our- <laughs> So this would be going. credit spread. Right on, go, go slow, we're gonna stay menu driven. So right, right. you're correct, it is a credit spread. And you brought you can, in nine, you spent two. That's right. So you can either use your, your T to figure this out, right? I'm going to do the T because I want to show you a lot of things on this red. But, yeah. uh, you know, we could have just netted it right on the screen here. I could have just said, that is money in. And we're going to put that in green. And this is money out. So whether we do that with the T, or whether we do it just, you know, in terms of our scratch paper, by the way, we have to have our scratch paper handy. And what I mean by that is because in test phraseology, right, they're not going to have it a nice kind of looking format like this. They'll say your customer I know. sells one apple, December 150, call at nine, and goes long one apple, December 160, call at two, when apples at 150. And then based on that, you got to be able to do this. So you had determined correctly this was a credit spread because we got more money in. So let's put that here. Let's put our nine. You know, and when you got a lot of things going on, I kind of like to label it in my scratch paper, just my mechanics. Just so, you know, when I go back and try and do things or look at it, I don't get lost. The more time you spend on the setup, it's embarrassing. But the more time you spend on the setup, the more, the more you're going to get at, good at correcting yourself. Like even Dean, you know, you know I, every once in a while I'll mess up something. And then I'll realize, you know, I can't tell you how many people were watching my videos. And before they even watch another 10 seconds, they're sending me comments. Oh, you got this wrong. <laughs> and then 10 oh, seconds yeah. Later, I say, hey, Keaton, I just noticed, man, that doesn't work. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's funny. So, uh, you yeah, know, and it's yeah. also nice because some of those some of those questions are so long and they, you know, they yeah. give you so much info that doesn't matter and some that time? does. No, I had 30 some minutes left. So it actually took me okay. longer okay. than so I thought I was it was going to, but yeah, exactly. I had plenty of time. But what I was going to say, setup, uh, I think a setup, particularly because you're not going to need a setup. But the three styles of questions you get are recognition, practical application, and judgment questions. And you know, you're not going to burn up too much time on options expire 1159 PM on the third Friday. Yep. You shouldn't be burning up too many brain cells on, you know, American style means you can exercise anytime. Oh, by the way, those are option questions and they're worth a point just like this is. So, I mean, you know, yeah. even the most complicated option strategy in the day is still the same point. Now, the next thing we've got to be able to do once we've done that, let's just, uh, again, we always kind of want to think about like putting a placeholder, if you will, on what we've done uh, before we, you know, start moving on. And what I mean by that is you, whatever your process is that you complete the process. And so we're being menu driven. We don't know what they're going to ask us yet. Uh, maybe they don't ask us to identify. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't ask us debit or credit. But if we stay menu driven, we're going to be in pretty good shape in terms of when we move forward trying to answer some questions. So what we're going to do is just remind ourselves that we're looking at this credit spread and the net credit is seven. So we're just going to put that there just to remind ourselves that we've already done that and we've got our net credit of seven. Now, once you get the credit, you can uh, rock and roll. You can rock and roll. Because the next thing we got to be able to do on the test is determine whether we want the contracts to expire or do we want the contracts to be exercised? Do we want the contracts to expire or do we want the contracts to exercise? And this one, we'd want it to expire. You are absolutely correct. You are absolutely correct. Because if I'm your broker, if I'm your broker and I call you now, by the way, don't, don't start, you know, thinking about it until you, you know, get the menu done. But when you get the right. menu done, then you can start thinking about it and say, okay, well, if I'm your broker, you know, you're out there wholesaling and, you know, you know, look like, like a relatively young man. Maybe you're aggressive and say, <laughs> you know, uh, Dean, that sounds like fun. You know, instead of betting on the games, I think I'll, I'll make a bet in the options market. Uh, I call you and I say the contract's expired. You would be happy, right? Because that yep. means you get to keep the money. Um, 
I think you'd be kind of a jerk, by the way. You said, well, Dean, had I done the naked calls, I would have made nine instead of seven. I said, yeah, but you would have been taking all kinds of risk. I mean, don't be a dumb bear. Don't be a dumb bear. By the way, if the stock is 90 or lower, there's our floor, no intrinsic value. And that would be wonderful because they would expire and we get to keep the money. You know, if, we'll, sorry, if it's what or lower, 90? 150, 150 or lower. If Apple's okay. 150 or lower, the contracts will expire yep. and we'll get to keep our money. That's, that's what we want. You know, all, all the action in the spread takes place between the strikes, between the, uh, the strikes is where all the action's at. All right, our yeah. fourth thing. We said there's eight things you got to be uh, know about a spread. They won't ask you all eight in one question. We just don't know what they are going to ask you. Exactly. And the next thing you got to be able to tell me is, do you want the spread to get smaller or do you want the spread to get larger? Do you want the difference in these premiums? Right now, the difference in the premiums is seven. And so when we go to close that out, do we want to have more than or less than? So. Uh, I say, hey, uh, Keaton, we established the spread for a net debit of seven, or net credit, excuse me, net credit of seven. That was the difference in the premiums when we did the spread. Uh, Keaton, right now I'm looking at the quote on these uh, two legs, not testable, these are called legs. And right now I can close it out for a net of five. You say, well, Jason, that'd be great, right? We close it out of five and we got seven, we make two. I go, yeah. He goes, well, no, no, no. You say, Dean, let's let it ride. Let's see if it can narrow some more. Uh, by the way, that's the hardest concept to get. Don't need to get it because it goes credit expire narrow all the time. Yeah, now, the that's most, what I was going to say. The most it can narrow to is when the contracts expire, right? So I'm just showing you again this concept of widen and narrow where I say, okay, well, when we did the spread, the difference was seven. And I say it uh, narrowed from seven to zero. And that's the most it can narrow to. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. Now in options, whenever you agree to be a potential victim, the best case is you agree to be a potential victim and nobody victimizes you. And so our fifth thing we gotta be able to do is determine the max game. And the max game, is whatever monies you've collected. Whenever you sell a call, you sell a put, you sell a straddle, you sell a spread. When you have money in, the best case is contract or contracts expire and you get to keep the money. It doesn't get any better than that. Now here, let's just put a little line here. We said all the action takes place between the strikes. All the action takes place between the strikes. So we have a net credit of seven. By the way, the biggest the, the conversation is not testable, but uh, this is a smart bear here. This is a smart bear. So what we're interested in now is the max gain and that's what we're working on. And it's a credit spread. So that's what we're doing. It's a credit spread. And our maximum gain at credit spread is what we've collected. Now, so max gain. And then we're going to be interested in max loss. I'm just going to give myself some more room here. Uh, max gain. max loss let's put that in here put it in red i said there's eight things and we're working on number five and number six right now and yep. one thing that we want to know uh, about options as we said is that it's all about uh the difference in the strikes here there's a floor and a ceiling so you know we set our max gain let's just put a little thing here for credit boom let's get a little smaller thing here And we said that when we have a credit spread, that's going to be our max gain. Now, test taking trick, test taking trick. In a spread, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. 
there's only 10 points here to be made or lost. So as a test taker, it would be bad form for you to give me any two numbers that don't add up to 10. That would just be yeah. bad form. Whatever those two numbers are, they have to add up to 10. I mean, that's the whole point, by the way, of doing a spread. So, you know, if I offer you seven and four, that can't possibly be correct. Now, if you don't want to memorize things, you know, so one thing you can do is memorize. And I would just tell you, you go down the memory road, you know, the more, you know, the more you, things you want to, you're going to have to continue to memorize more and more stuff if that's the road you choose. And, yep. but what I think is easier, what I think is easier. So what we're out working on right now is the max loss. And the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. The gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. That's the whole point of a spread, by the way. Now, if you don't get that, ugh, if you don't get that, then you're going to have to memorize it in a credit spread. The max loss is the difference in the strikes less the net credit which I just think is a mental mess. Yeah. No, I, I knew that the max gain plus max loss is the difference, Always, yeah. but I don't think I could probably tell you how to get to the three without really thinking okay, about well, it. We're going to roll it all back. We're going to roll it all back and do it again. So you can either memorize that, or as we said, you can say from grade school, something plus seven equals 10. Yep. What is that something and you would say three. Now, let me just illustrate that again. You don't want to be, you know, until you get the menu done, you don't want to be thinking about things. But what I mean by that is after you get the menu done, then you can say, okay, well, let me think about this. So if I'm your broker and I call you and I say, hey, Keaton, the contracts got exercised. The contracts got exercised. That means you bought the Apple at 160. You bought the apple at 160 and you sold at 150. That's not pleasurable. That's painful. Yep. And you'd lose 10 points, but there's seven in your account already. Right. Okay. And hey, thank yep. God we didn't do a naked call, my friend. Had we done a naked call, oh my God, we could have been clobbered. Right. So that's our max. Yep. And there's 10. So whatever those two numbers are, here we have seven. So here we know this number is going to be three. Right. The gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Now, uh, if Dean was clever, let's see if I can be clever. I probably shouldn't try and be clever, but so I think I can do this. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do here is put minus signs. We're representing, let's do three of them. Boom. That looks like I got too big a font. Let's try a smaller font here. Boom. There's our three, all right? So there's our three points of loss, put it right there. And let's see how clever I'm gonna be here. Let's I'm trying to be clever here as well. Uh, let's put that one in green. Uh, I'm just giving you visual representation, not testable, but nobody's gonna ask you to graph anything on the test. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, so that's what that looks like. And we said that whatever those two numbers are, they have to add up to the difference in the strikes. Now, the next thing we got to do, we said there's eight things. The next thing we got to be able to do is we have to be able to calculate the break even. Now, test taking trick again, test taking trick again. If we shop our answer set, we know that the break even has to be somewhere between 150 and 160. So we could toss out of the answer set any numbers that aren't in that range. Uh, it's got to be somewhere within that range. Now, before we turn this into a spread, now let me tell you as your tutor, I went way north with you way quick. And the reason I went way north with you way quick is because you did so good on the long call and the short call. I said, okay, let's let's step it up a notch. <laughs> sure. right? I mean, I seem to have the calls and butts. So just want to remind you that before we turn this into a spread, we had unlimited loss and now we don't. Our yeah. break, it was 159, but you know, it's not 159 anymore. So again, yeah. there's a couple ways to proceed. The break even here is going to be 157. And there's a couple ways to get to that 157. 
Now, remember, I said uh, kind of a test taking trick. Don't take tell me on the test. It would be bad form for you as a test taker to give me a break even that isn't somewhere between 150 and 160. Yep. All right. So we have a memory aid device that helps us remember how to get break evens and call spreads. Yep. And that memory aid device is cow. Add to the lower. That's right. So we're going to take the lower strike, which in our example, let me just finish getting our mnemonic up here. Uh, did you uh, come to a class ever, Keaton? No. So I was I was looking for something in person in Des Moines. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the reason I ask, I'm going to send you my class notes. Uh, okay. So, you know, it's kind of a Cliff Notes version of Series 7. Um, yeah. But anyway, you can just use that. You can use it kind of like as an intellectual inventory to kind of Say, look through it, and if there's something there you're not quite sure about, uh, do that. So, um, yeah. My point is, you you know, don't be too worried about your recording this, and you know, you'll get a document that kind of follows this as well. All right. Okay. So, call add to low. We're going to take the lower strike, one fifty. We're going to add the net premium, seven, and we're going to get our break even of one fifty seven. Now, the last thing we got to be able to do is we have to determine. Uh, by the way, before I move on, if you don't want to memorize break-evens, if you don't want to memorize break-evens, you could also use the T and you could plug the dominant leg in. My dominant leg is my obligation to sell Apple at 150. And then I could just shop the answer set and know that it's a number that if I plug it in over here would make the columns balance. Right? So you could shop the answer set as well as doing the mnemonic device. Last thing we got to be able to do is determine bullish or bearish and how are we going to determine whether this is a bullish spread and we want apple above 157 or is it a bullish spread how are we going to determine that uh, let's make a number eight here this is our last thing on the spread we got all these things whatever they want to know we've got the answer well you want it to narrow so wouldn't it be a bearish spread then? Yeah, you, yeah, but be careful because it could be a, a credit put spread and it would be narrow and it'd be bullish. But yes, you're correct yeah, that we, it is bearish. Yeah. But the way we do that is the larger premium dominates the position. The larger okay. premium dominates the position. So we go here, we're trying to figure out what sandbox we're playing in. And we say, okay, well, it looks like, well, come on. It looks like this is the sandbox we're playing in. But, you know, we're smart enough bears to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm a smart bear, man. I want that nine bucks and I want it bad. Right? Yeah. By the way, it's easier to be right with selling options because the reason who buys an option, it has to be right about three things. They have to be right about volatility, you know, how much the movement, the direction and expiration. So it's easier to take the money. But, you know, you want to be smart and take the money without, you know, creating all the risk. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm hoping. So you're correct. This is indeed a bearish spread on Apple, but it's a lot smarter than doing naked calls on Apple because that would be really just not smart, right? So we did all eight things we're required to do in a spread. We have to be able to identify it. We identified this as a credit spread. Let's just roll this back. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see how far back it'll let me go. <laughs> it looks like it's working. Yeah, I say I bought this. That was the dumb bear, right? This is where you yep. answered everything correctly. And I said, okay, I think this guy's ready. Let's see if he can hang. So, you know, this is just not smart. We said this is a very dumb bear. So we decided to take some of our money, conversations not testable, and yep. put in a ceiling. And our first test question was can you tell me that you're looking at a spread? The spread is when you're long and short the same type of contract. So we identified it. We said the next thing we got to do, and this is really important because we get this right and right, we can rock and roll. If we get debit, we know debit exercise widen, we got our loss. If we get credit, we know credit expire narrow and we've got our gain. So we're going to net those premiums. That's why it's called a spread. We're spreading the difference in the premiums. We said you can either do it with a T or you can just put it on your scratch paper. And then we said, you know, sometimes, well, the other reason I like T's, by the way, is 
sometimes people struggle when they get this phraseology and they're not doing anything. I go, you know, so the mantra I always tell people is fire up the tea. Yep. Fire yep. up the tea. I mean, if you're stuck, I, I, where's your tea? Now, did you uh, find me through through YouTube or? Yeah, uh, just through you... YouTube. Yep. Okay. So, you know, uh, you know, people know that when they, you know, that, that if they're do, doing Dean's method, we're going to fire up a tea. If, That's right. If we, you know, we don't know what to do with once we fire it up. <laughs> What's the start? All right. Yeah, so I, uh, I always laugh when you say, uh, when you go through the options matrix and you say, if you can say, you know, this, 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 and this, even if you don't know what you're talking about, technically <laughs> you're correct. And I feel like yeah. that's, I was at you know, that I kind point of, and I like the freedom now I know a little, but yeah, yeah I, I like that. I, I like that you too, because I don't have to be as politically correct as right, I exactly doing, you know, like corporate things. And, you know, it's amazing yep. to me what people get mad at, but you know, your, your point, you know, I used to say, I still, I think I sometimes slip and I say, you know, when you're a baby broker and oh my goodness, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I like that stuff because it makes yeah, me feel I said, better. I, I mean, now when I say it, when I slip and say, I go now, just so you're aware, that's a term of endearment. It is not yep. a derogatory term. It's just somebody yeah. who's new, right? So, uh, so I'm glad to hear that. So, uh, and boy, now I'll tell you even that sometimes I, I'll, I'll say something and I don't forget if English is a second language, maybe it's not coming out correctly because like, yeah. I'll, I'll say something like my quoting somebody else. I'll say, Keaton, this is what so-and-so said. And then somebody will think I said that. I go, no, I didn't say it. I'm yeah. Saying, <laughs> so. yeah. All right. So once we get that, we can really rock and roll. So that's a key piece of our analysis. So we get that, we say, okay, now I want to be menu driven. So if you could, you want to, you could just write then say, okay, there's my game. I agree to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes me, neener, neener, neener. Right. So you could, you don't have to do it in this order, but if you do it in an order, then it makes more sense. Exercise or expire. We said, well, no, we don't want to buy Apple at 160 and deliver 150. That's painful. No, no, no. We want to be able to keep the money. So we want the contracts to expire. Or even if they get smaller, the difference gets smaller is we're still going to win. If we can close this out for something less than seven, if we can offset it, that would work. That would work. And yeah. then we said, that's going to be our max gain. And we said, our max gain and our max loss always equals the difference in the strikes. There's only 10 points to be made or lost here. We've collected seven. So, you know, statement you're driven, but you say, okay, well, if I buy it at 160, deliver 150, you know, life is good. Life is good. And uh, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. So again, something plus seven equals 10, or you can do the difference in the strikes, less the net credit, whatever works for you. Now, if this was a debit spread, it'd be the opposite, right? We'd have the debit, and then the difference would be our gain. I'll show that to you perhaps next. Okay, so there's our break even. And we said the cows that for uh, puts, it would be push, put subtract from the higher. We got our break even, bullish or bearish, larger premium dominates the position. All right, so would you like to do another spread or would you like to look at a straddle? Those are the advanced option strategies. That's yeah, let's look, at a, let's look at a straddle. Okay. So uh, I like a straddle, particularly where we're talking about right now. Apple, I don't think he's going to stand at 150. I mean, I think either people are going to love that iPhone. What are we on, 14 now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know? uh, or they're not going to like it. I just don't think Apple's going to stay where it's at. Now, if I were bullish on Apple, I would buy or go long one Apple December. 150 call at nine. And this was the strategy you, you nailed earlier. You said, Dean, uh, break even 159, unlimited gain potential, a nine point loss, and I'm bullish. And yep. I say, well, okay, well, you know, let's straddle that strike price line. You know, I don't know what's happened. I just know it's going to move. You know, if I knew what direction, I wouldn't be straddling the strike price. I would do, uh, by the way, straddles are a little more straightforward on the exam. Uh, there's four things we got to be able to do. Four things. And the first thing we got to be able to do is identify. Now, even if that wasn't a test question, that's always what we got to do. But even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. You got to be able to look at that and tell me it's a straddle. Uh, but even if it wasn't, if you can't identify the strategy, you kind of don't know what to do next. So, I mean, it kind of is bleeds from there. I mean, you're just going to be staring at the screen going, I don't know. 
That's not yeah. a good thing. <laughs> now, a straddle with different strike prices, a straddle with different strike prices is called a combination. You wouldn't do anything differently. So sometimes I regret telling people their combinations because then they freak out. It's just a straddle of different strike prices. The next yeah. thing we got to be able to do once we've identified the straddle is we have to calculate the break evens. This is the only strategy in which we have two break evens. You know, every once in a while, again, I'll tell you, welcome to my world. Somebody will call me and say, well, Dean, what about condors and butterflies? I go, listen, they're not on the seven. So they're, yes, are there other option <laughs> strategies that do break yeah. even? They're just not. I was going to say, I don't even know what those are. So <laughs> yeah, they're the wrong answers. So somebody who's got yeah. I saw it on my test. I go, if you see it on your test, it's the wrong answer. Don't it's wrong. That. Yeah. So Good we're going to do that now, by now taking the strike price plus the total premiums. And that's going to give us our upside break even. We got two. Okay, so you add them both. It wouldn't just be call up with the nine yeah, and way, down with the nine. You'd be both. You keep, that's right. If you keep working, if you keep working, which I know you will. Uh, oh, well, you know, I know you're busy. You know, sometimes it's harder to, to study if you're, you know, a wholesaler and you're trying to, you know, continue to conduct business. I get it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm assuming you're not getting like four months with pay and, you know, saying, hey, just take four months and come back with a Yeah, lesson. that's that's the harder part. It's like, <laughs> yep, just go get it and still do what you're doing. Yeah. So, uh, I, again, I think, though, if you get good, what I'm saying about this, if you, the spreads you're netting. So, in, in general, if you have a buy and a sell, even stock or options, if you have a buy and sell, you're going to net. Right. Yeah. If it's a buy, buy or sell, sell, you're going to combine. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, even if it's like we buy the stock and we buy a put, buy, buy. We're going to combine those numbers. Again, the T could be helpful here again, because what we mean by that is you could look at this and say, this is dollars out. And this is dollars out. And then that would be kind of a hint that you're going to combine things. Right? If that was in, in, you'd still combine that. So our yep. combined premiums are 18. So we're going to take 150, 150 plus 18. That gives us our upside break even. And then we're going to have our downside break even. As we said, this is the only one in which we have two break evens. And again, we're either buying or selling volatility. Here we're buying 18 points of volatility. We just don't know, you know, which uh, if it was just a call, right? I only have to be right about up. Or if just a put, I got to be wrong about down. There's a built in mistake here. And I got to have a leg that comes through for me in a big enough way to take care of the built-in loss. There's no way we're going to be right on both these contracts in the same universe. And so we're going to go subtract 150 uh, minus 18. Now I'm terrible at arithmetic, so I'm not being facetious. I'm going to use my calculator because God knows you don't want to give up a question because you can't do math. Yeah, for sure. 138. 138. Okay, so that's our... Uh, Next test question. If we were making again, if I we think were, it's one one thirty two, isn't it? Oh, well, there you go. That's what I told you. Now, yeah. Dean would have got himself. I would have. No, you would have because I would have shopped the answer set, and that wouldn't have been available to me, right? And no, isn't sure. that terrible? I still missed it, even after I used my calculator. I think I said the right thing, did I not? I just didn't write. Well, the right. I don't that's know, but I wanted to make sure. I'm like, I don't want to get myself confused here. Yeah, I'm pretty it. sure. Uh, I got one fifty minus eighteen is. Uh, 150 minus 18. Is that terrible? I don't even like the number, even though the calculators tell me it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's 132, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So back in business. So again, here is a uh, picture. Here is a picture of the market price of Apple. Right. We can go from zero to infinity. And here is the strike price that we are straddling. We are straddling 150. We are straddling 150. That is our strike price. And that's why it's called a straddle, because that's what we're straddling. We're either you know, long or short. We've got to cover our out-of-pocket costs. So we're going to have two break-evens. We're going to have our upside break-even. And we're going to have our downside break-even. And we have determined that our upside break-even is 168. 
and our downside break even. Dean doesn't like it, but I don't know why I don't like that number. But I'm going <laughs> to try to flip the eight and the two or something. <laughs> something <Yeah>. happened. <laughs> uh, I'm dyslexic. I don't know. I have some kind of a yeah. problem. Anyways, that's why you want to be disciplined on your scratch paper and uh, do whatever you're going to do. Now, the third thing we have to be able to determine is where is it profitable? Where is the straddle profitable? So where do we want Apple to be in relationship to? So the outside above or below both. That's right. We got a great mnemonic for that. That's right. Where's the straddle profitable? That's called silo. Short inside, long outside. So we're looking at, where is the straddle profitable? We're looking at a, a long straddle. And so we want Apple to be either above 168 or below 132. And That's funny. I knew silo, but I, I didn't know in my head what short inside, long outside meant yeah. until right now. <laughs> well, there we go. That's why you get tutoring, right? So yep, here, exactly. what we're saying is if this was a short Apple straddle, if I just change the buys to sells, it would still have a break even of 132 and 168. It would just be the person who short the straddle wants Apple to be between 132 and 168. When you buy yeah. the straddle, you want it outside. So again, in terms of my happy face, right? Well, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, come on, there we go. Boom. Uh, let's well, let's change that. Let's change that to red because that's going to be an unhappy face. Right? We don't want that. Yep. We want. And again, if we did the opposite strategy, it'd be the opposite. And then the last thing we got to be able to do on a straddle is we have to uh, say, when do we use a straddle? When do we use a straddle? So if we're long, we use it when we expect volatility, but direction's uncertain, right? So we don't know if Apple's going up or down, but we think it's moving. You know, I yep. think a good one, uh, one of straddle I did one time is this company was having troubles. And I thought, well, they're going to get a new CEO and he's either going to fix their troubles or he's not. I don't care if he does or he doesn't. If he fixes problems, the stock goes up. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't fix the problems, the stock goes down. So I bought a call on a put. Uh, by the way, I was I actually bought the per, put first thinking he wasn't going to be able to fix the problems. I thought, you know, and then I thought, well, you know, what do I care? If it's four points or eight points, what the heck? And I bought yeah, the yeah. Uh, call. P.S. He fixed the problem. So my put expired worthless and my call came through big. Or uh, yeah. lit litigation, right? Uh, a company is going to either win the lawsuit or they're going to lose the lawsuit. So, you know, I don't care if they win or they lose, just as long as the stock moves, right? Yep. So that's what we're yeah. Now, short styles are very, very seductive. I said, do you think Apple's going to stay between 132 and 168? If so, there's a way to profit, but there is a danger. We talked about being a dumb bear, and there is a danger in a short straddle. And the danger in a short straddle is that if you're wrong, you got a problem. Right? Short straddles have unlimited risk. Don't overthink this on the exam. You know, don't worry about this. I mean, this is still bad, but you know, that's definable. You know, if that short put blows up on you, it's a definable number. But this sure. leg here, remember this leg, if it's if this is a short call. A short straddle that's you know going to be could be going to be problematic okay so we did a straddle we did a spread um we're almost at our hour but let's do let's slam one more let's slam one more uh what option strategy you want to do we got choices are we could do a debit spread we could do a short straddle we could do a stock plus an option what else would you like to get done in your uh, your option session yeah let's do a stock plus an option Okay, here we go. So first major point, stock dominates. So I'm going to buy 100 shares of Apple at 150. Because you always say when you see that, you kind of like stop and say, hold oh, on a exactly second, this isn't right. an option. Yeah. I really, you know, I think so many people get hung up. I mean, you know, I like I say, as a teacher tutor, I'm like, oh, how can I get people to do the right thing? And uh, how many people confuse, uh, you know, naked calls with covered calls? And so, yeah, I always say, uh, you know, the minute you see buy 100 shares, I think you should stop and put bullish right there because it doesn't matter what comes next in terms of optioning the option. 
right? So it doesn't matter what I'm going to add. You can't, the way I keep trying to say it is you can't let the option tail wag the stock dog. Yeah. So, you know, now we're always interested in the offset. So what I mean by that, again, the conversation is not testable, but, you know, we're all, if I bought the stock, if I bought the stock, I want to be able to do the offset again, right? So eventually I know I'm going to want to sell the apple. And so I'm out 150 for the apple. And I know the offset, the offset is to sell that apple. Now, remember the matrix doesn't work for everything, but the contract specifications never do change. And so I know that if I'm going to end up selling the apple, because I already bought it, I don't want to do that. I know that it's either going to be a short call or income, or it's going to be a long put for protection. And the reason Dean knows that is because I'm interested in the offset, which is selling the stock, right? I'm interested in either bringing in some money for an obligation to sell the stock. Please note, the stock I own is an entirely different proposition. Right. Or I want to buy some insurance on my stock. Okay. So what do we want to do? Do you want to do income? You want some income or do you want some protection? Uh, let's do protection. Okay. So protection means right now, remember, I, it's again, not testable. I think options are all about floors and ceilings. So uh, what I'm worried about is falling down 150 flights of stairs. That's painful. Right now I could lose $15,000. So I'm going to do some construction. Remember this construction costs money. I'm going to move that floor up. I'm going to move the floor from zero to something a little more palatable to me in terms of a loss. I'm practicing risk mitigation. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're an insurance guy, right? Insurance costs money. So yeah. I got to pay a premium for the insurance. And listen, I don't buy insurance because I plan on wrecking. I buy the insurance just in case, right? So now we're going to buy one apple. Now we have to decide how long we want the protection in place. You know, the longer we want the protection in place, the more it's going to cost us. So uh, maybe we go out, you know, we don't know what Christmas sales are going to be. I, we're bullish on Apple, but we're just worried about, you know, something happens. Uh, maybe we go out to uh, January so we can get some visibility on Christmas, perhaps. Uh, now we need to decide where we want to put the floor. at. Now, a choice to sell at a higher strike will give me greater protection, but it will also cost me more money. Mm -hmm. right. So 145, let's go for a 145, but that's bueno. Now I don't fall down 150 flights of stairs. I only fall down to 145. Yes. So by 145 put, put protection costs money. And let's say that that cost me uh, three points. Well, now what I always like to do, what I always like to do is underneath that, if I get uh, stuck, particularly on puts, because puts are the ones that are kind of, you know, the ones that throw people for a loop. Uh, choice to sell the stock I own at the strike price. Okay, so three points. Is that money out or money in? Uh, money in. Eh. Or no, yeah, money out. Money out. There you go. All right. So it. this is the one time and the one time only that it's not put down. And the reason this is not put down is because this is not a put position. This is a stock position. And so this is the one time, by the way, you can shop your answer set and look for a break-even offer to you that matches this T. But yep. here's our T. Boom. So T's are especially helpful on a stock position because if you forget the one thing, you yeah, can totally. at least save yourself. I, I totally believe that. I mean, so... You know, there's people, you know, like, yeah, it's like being an old man. I, you know, I, I kind of think, well, gee, you know, there's what happened to our culture. That's not a bad thing that somebody's got some battle scars. 
you know, yeah. the, the tea works. So there's, you know, there's people who are trying to invent new ways to options. I'm always saying, why would we want to do something that isn't tried and true that we, we just don't know that, that it works all the time. This works all the time. And so this is the one time and the one time only and your point about the tea, right? It kind of, the tea almost walks you into the right math, right? Because yeah. here's our break even. Our break even is 153. Now let's put that there. I also like to make a little line. If I'm going to net columns, so let me just show you, uh, this is a Dean thing. So I don't like, uh, I probably wouldn't net the columns as a tutor. I'm showing you to net that column, but I probably wouldn't. But if I am, I want to make sure I put that line to, to remind myself, I'm the one who put 153 there. That wasn't yeah. part of the given information or question. The given information was the 150 plus the three. Now, what's really bueno about this is now, right? That's the whole point of this strategy. The whole point of this strategy is I now, anytime I want, can close this out at the strike price. So for example, if uh, at expiration in January, Apple's uh, 120, I'm not gonna sell it at 120. I'm gonna stick it to somebody at 145. So that's going to be my worst case scenario now, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah. If I exercise my put for 145, that's the strike price, right? So the most I can lose is the break even to the strike. Now the maximum loss is the break even to the strike, which is kind yeah. of bueno, right? So let's just put that there. Boom, max loss. And that's why you do it. Uh, by the way, you still have a limit gain because you don't have to sell the stock if you don't want to. You know, I had a doctor client, you know, drove me nuts. I was trying to get him to do this. And he said, well, Dean, you know, if Apple isn't below 145, you know, the puts expire and we will have wasted our money for the protection. I said, well, that's true, doctor. But I mean, you know, we're not buying it because we think Apple's going up. We're buying because Apple's going down. By the way, and the point is we had a gain and I just thought he was being penny wise and pound foolish not to want to protect the stock position. You know, my, yeah. the classic one I always use in this strategy is Mark Cuban. The foundation of Mark Cuban's fortune is selling broadcast.com to uh, Yahoo for a billion dollars in Yahoo stock. If he wasn't bullish, he would have sold it. Remember, that's the key thing again. Don't get hung up because it's still a bull. We're still bullish on Apple. Or is a, yep. you know, people look at this put and they go, I'm a bear. No, no, no. If that was just a long put, you would be a bear. But no, the stock dominates. But anyways, Mark Cuban, the stock was over hundred bucks and he bought 95 puts. And in 2010, uh, Yahoo was 20 bucks a share and he exercised his puts to sell at 95 and paid $200 million in capital gains tax, but he did protect the gain. You know, so the answer- Yeah, that feels pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, our session, I've, I've enjoyed our, our session today. Uh, I don't know if it recorded this to the cloud or let you record it because I made you a co-host. So I'm not sure uh, if that means it's on my my- my web cloud at zoom or yours yeah i'm not uh, sure either okay well let's check it if you if you don't show it as a local file i'll send it to you and the other thing Keen, i asked sometimes Perfect. for permission and because you did so well in the session and i felt we did a pretty good job on the hour given with your permission i would like to share it in a tutoring replay list on the channel if you're okay with that if you're not that's cool too so whatever you'd like yeah, no that's yeah that's fine help other people. Some, people want, some people aren't hosting or some people don't have a couple hundred <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, Let's see. Did you see it anywhere on your cloud? Well, here, let me let me stop it. If not, when we when we end, I'll I'll find it and send it to you.